Hello, welcome to Suit Up, the podcast of heroes, and I am your host, Terrence Lehew. On today's episode of the podcast, we're doing something I'm really excited about. I'm going to be giving my non-spoiler review of With a Mind to Kill by Anthony Horowitz, the latest of the James Bond continuation novels. So stay tuned and enjoy my review. It is M's funeral. One man is missing from the graveside. The traitor who pulled the trigger and is now in custody. Accused of M's murder, James Bond. Behind the Iron Curtain, a group of former Smirsh agents wants to use the British spy in an operation that will change the balance of world power. Bond is smuggled into the lion's den. But whose orders is he following? And will he obey them when the moment of truth arrives? On a mission where treachery is all around and one false move means death. Bond must grapple with the darkest questions about himself, but not even he knows what has happened to the man he used to be. That is the description on the inside cover, and that is my maybe passable English accent. If any of you listening are from England, please do critique me. I I welcome it. I don't think it's my best English accent, but... Eh, it's the one I went with. So, uh, this is my very off-the-cuff and very non-scripted, non-spoiler, I'll add, non-spoiler review of Anthony Horowitz's latest book, With a Mind to Kill. It is his third James Bond novel. He's written two others, the first being Trigger Mortis, which is set uh, about the middle of the Bond canon following the events of Goldfinger, and forever in a day which is takes place just before it's a prequel to casino royale now i really enjoyed forever in a day and i mean trigger mortis was fine it just i mean it was very bond-esque in the story and i think that horowitz did a great job just it's not one of those books that i go back and reread whereas i have gone back and reread forever in a day now will i go back and reread with a mind to kill almost certainly Almost certainly I will reread with a mind to kill. The first thing I want to address is the title. Now, when I first read the title, I was like, wow, we had such clever names before. Trigger Mortis definitely sounds like a Bond style title. And it's a little clever. It's very 60s-esque. Forever and a day. What a classic line that incorporates so beautifully into the book. And then the third one we get is, with a mind to kill. Eh. I mean, sure, it's a name, but it sounds so generic when it comes to Bond. I mean, kill in the title just feels a little lackluster. So that was my initial impression of the name. Going into the book, I had faith in Horowitz and doubts about the title, but my doubts on the title were actually proven incorrect because one of the main premises of this book is that Bond is recovering from the brainwashing that he got at the end of the man with the, well, at the end of You Only Live Twice in the beginning of The Man with the Golden Gun. Bond has been captured by Russian agents, basically, as he's wandering around with amnesia after the events of You Only Live Twice, and he's brainwashed and sent back to MI6 to murder M. So if you are familiar with those stories, you look at this book and you read that inside jacket and you're like, oh, wow. So wait a minute. I thought in The Man with the Golden Gun, he was stopped. Well, he was. So you, again, without any spoilers, the book basically picks up right at the end of The Man with the Golden Gun, which is not an unfamiliar place for a Bond continuation novel to start from. In fact, I've been very impressed with the fact that Horowitz didn't go there first. So there have been two other Bond continuation novels that pick up with the Fleming timeline right after The Man with the Golden Gun. The first, and this is one I can't fault in any way, was Kingsley Amos's Colonel Sun, which is a great book and a great follow-up. It doesn't quite have the same taste that Fleming does in some ways, but still a riveting James Bond story. Very classic, very good. The next book that followed up The Man with the Golden Gun was Sebastian Falk's um, writing as Ian Fleming in a slight pretentious way, 
his book was titled Devil May Care, which again, actually not that bad of like a generic Bondish name. But that book also picked right up after, uh, not Colonel Sun, it picked up right after The Man with the Golden Gun. And that's maybe, I, I own a copy, but I'll be honest, that one I think I've only read once wasn't particularly entertaining for me. I know there are some fans. I hope that you enjoy it. I'm glad you enjoy it. The So I was a little surprised, but not really, that Horowitz decided to kind of end his Bond saga with ending the Bond saga. And it had me curious. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to praise about this book is that what Anthony Horowitz does that none of the other continuation authors have that have stepped into this point in the Fleming timeline is Bond is recovering from the trauma of the last three books. So we have, before You Only Live Twice, we have On Her Majesty's Secret Service, where he gets married and his wife dies. You Only Live Twice, where he's hunting down her killer. And then The Man with the Golden Gun, where he has to, first of all, he's brainwashed by the Russians and then has to redeem himself and finds that he's not quite as quick as he used to be. Again, this book doesn't remove that. It doesn't forget about that. The other books, it feels like they immediately go to, here, we're back, here's Bond, we're on with the status quo, here's your adventure. This book acknowledges that Bond has been broken beaten down, and he doesn't know if he still has enough. Well, that fell over. He's broken, he's battered down, and he doesn't know if he has the th stones at this point, the mental fortitude to keep going on as a spy. That said, the other part I like about this is that Anthony Horowitz, not only does he acknowledge where Bond's psyche is at, again, the book is With a Mind to Kill, he not only acknowledges the psyche, and Bond's state, he also is following the same thing that I've identified throughout all of his books and loved about his books, is that he's mimicking Fleming's voice so beautifully. One of the things that, minor criticism of Forever in a Day, is that occasionally you hear things that sound a little like anachronisms. They sound like modern opinions spoken in the 60s language, which I get it, I understand, it's just kind of the way it goes sometimes, but those were things that I was just a little surprised at. There's nothing like that in this book at all. If anything, the thing I'm most impressed at is that in his pursuit of so skillfully copying Fleming to a degree, with his own voice obviously, but still mimicking that same tone, is that Fleming from Casino Royale to The Man with the Golden Gun had changed considerably. The language and tone towards those last three books becomes a little darker, a little more cynical, especially in You Only Live Twice. You get a very a, a sense of the British Empire's decline and that Bond is recognizing that the, the world itself, that outlook that he has, is also becoming a darker one as he's on this revenge-filled mission. Even in The Man with the Golden Gun, you see the notes of just sadness because it, this is also mirroring as Fleming is progressively losing health and getting sick. There's just there's a darkness to those books that I think is interesting by comparison to the other novels. And I think that Horowitz captures that tone well. It's not to say this is a dark book, but it isn't ignoring that. In his pursuit of writing a really skillful novel, he's still continuing with the way that Bond is thinking, as he was thinking in the previous two books. And that is something that I genuinely appreciate about Anthony Horowitz's With a Mind to Kill. One of the other things that I really enjoyed in this book is that it's a classic Cold War plot. Bond spends much of the story in Russia and in Berlin, and here's the amazing thing. The world's most famous spy is actually doing spy work. Depending on your familiarity with the Bond series, most of the books, Bond doesn't really spy in the classical sense, and he basically is never in Russia to my recollection. I think 
there's in the living daylights he is in berlin but that might be the only time so it was definitely a novelty at the time and the age was that he was writing these cold war stories that weren't actually set in a lot of those very obvious places but considering bond has never really gone there before i think that was really a great choice by horowitz to set most of the story in those settings and again Bond actually gets to do spycraft, the actual work of a secret agent, which I think is so cool. He's presented as literally thrown to the wolves in the paragraph in the dust jacket. They describe it as the lion's den, and that's what it is. They're sending Bond into a situation where we hope you make it out, not guaranteeing that he will. It's a genuinely enjoyable story. If you are a Bond fan, or if you just enjoy a classic Cold War thriller. So that is going to be the extent of my spoiler-free review. Maybe I'll do a spoiler review after I've reread the book, but those are the broad strokes of what I thought reading With a Mind to Kill. I hope you check it out. I'm going to drop a link to it in the show notes, but it is well worth the purchase, well worth the read, and a shout out to Rory Kinnear, who plays Tanner in the uh, latest Bond film starring Daniel Craig. He does the audiobook version of it, and he, it was absolutely fantastic. So if you're an audiobook person, also check out the audiobook. Well worth the read, well worth the listen. And yeah, check out With a Mind to Kill by Anthony Horowitz. We hope you've enjoyed this slightly different episode of Suit Up. If you have enjoyed the show, please subscribe on whatever your favorite podcast player of choice is. While you are there, please leave us a rating and review, especially on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Until next time, this has been Terrence Lehew and Suit Up, wishing you a very happy Suit Up Sunday.